Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise we come for the homegrown celebration of Mr. Robert E. This is time we ask that you bow your heads as we go into prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come to you as humble as we know how God is to say thank you. God, thank you for letting us see a day that we didn't deserve to see. God, thank you for being a God that sit high and look low. Thank you for being a God that looked beyond all of our faults and seen our needs, oh God. Now, God, we come asking that you comfort this bereaved family. Give them strength to make it through this, oh God. God, let them know you're too wise to make a mistake and you're too just to do any wrong, oh God. God, let them know that they can lean and depend on you, oh God. That they will always get too late, oh God, that they can't call you, oh God. Now, where they go, God, and then you always there. Let them know, oh God, that you're the only one that can feel this, oh God. We come now and I ask that you strengthen them, oh God. Hold them, keep them, oh God. Keep your little arms around them. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. Yes, son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> program calls for scriptures. In our Old Testament scripture, we'll be coming from Psalms 91, verses 1 to 7. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He had He shall deliver thee from the snares of the Father and from the nonsense pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that fell by the day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor the destruction that wasteth up, that wasteth away no, at noon day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Our New Testament scripture comes from First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that you saw or not even as others who has no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I love you, Lord. And I
the first to have Christian Pugh Pettis will come at this time. So I'm in 
gave her um, um his granddaughter. Um, he had a lot of them. <laughs> My granddaddy had a lot of kids, <laughs> and he always said, he always told me, "Girl, I got a lot of kids. I don't know half of them. I don't know where they at. But I tell you what, I guess a few of them that." I really deal with and I talk to. And like she said, my granddaddy was never like staying in one place at one time, like ever. So like, you know, kids be like, oh, that's my daddy. Why he not taking the time to see me or be with me? My granddaddy was the kind of man like he is who he was. And if you wanted to get to know him or if you wanted to take the time, you had to take that time with him and do what he wanted you to do. And I just thank God that I took that time out of my life to spend with him, even if it was leaving my kids for two weeks at a time or a month just to get out there. I stayed in, I rode on the truck with him. I got on that truck and we rode the road for a whole month and I stayed with there. And I just thank God that I was able to take the time to get to know him because he was, he was an awesome man. Like, he was funny, he was strong. Yeah, he liked his cigarettes, but that was the comfort for him after he had to go through what he went through in life, you know, and I just thank God that he, when he, when he went home, the way he called him home, was able to be around family, to have people that he loved there to comfort him, instead of being out on the road somewhere and running off the ditch somewhere in the truck, you know, he went home peacefully, and I'm thankful, and I just want to uh, just get the time to know, you know, Granddaddy always wanted us to know, you know, our other, his people. And that's why we always went to Alabama. He drove, we drove to Florida. We drove everywhere. He said, girl, that's your cousin over there, girl. That's your cousin right there, too. It's a lot of us. And, you know, I'm just thankful. And I just thank the Lord. He let me get to know my granddaddy. And I'm going to be strong for him because I know he won't want, you know, us acting crazy or crying in or nothing like that. But just to remember him for who he was, you know. And he was an awesome man. I didn't know Robert, but I know that. So he and I had something in common. Daddy, you're gonna be okay. Hey, he's going to heaven with my dad. Daddy took care of my dad. <laughs> um, Old at Discovery Village, he went to for school. And there wasn't a day that wouldn't go by, but she wouldn't talk about how wonderful he was. And, my dad and she supported me through a very, very rough time and I'm so ever grateful to her and to him for letting her live in Florida so that she could be here for us. So that's all I want to say, but I want to thank you for everything and you're going to be okay, so I'd be okay. John, he constantly talk about Fess. John 
you was a pain in his butt, but he loved you. <laughs> Just know that he loved you. He talked about you to the day he died, literally, to the day he died. So I just want you all to know, don't cry, because he wouldn't want that. He would not want that. Just like Paul, he told me, when Paul came to see him in the hospital, you know that boy came in here, he tried to sit there and cry. This big rusty man told me, he's sitting over there crying with tears. I told him, I'm the one that's crying. I should be crying, I'm the one in the hospital. So, just like he told Paul in the hospital, He's in a casket. He wouldn't want you to cry for him. He know he, you all loved him. He spoke very highly of you all. He just wasn't able to express it, but in his own way, trust me, he loved each and every one of you. I have a story about each and every one of you. All the ones that I haven't met, I have a story for you, and it comes from Robert. Okay.
not to be before you long. But just to leave a few words with you. From the book of 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 6, Paul says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure, my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearance. Just for a few minutes, I want to talk to the family from the subject, I'm all right now. Oftentimes, death comes and we find ourselves in a roller coaster because we left with so many unsaid words, uh, left with memories of if I would have had a little more chance, I would have said this or I would have done this. But I'll never to the point we take the time to realize that our loved ones are saying, I'm all right now. And in transition, they have a time where they have an opportunity, hopefully, to talk to God and tell God all about them. And before God allows them to transition to home, he gives them that chance to maybe say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me, or whatever the case may be. But I just want to assume that Robert is saying, I'm all right now. I hear that he says that he was a truck driver and he drove up and down the world and city to city, town to town. But here you got wrong on his assignment. Still driving, but I had hit his sign of destination. A destination where that he ain't gonna stop by Alabama no more. He ain't gonna stop through Florida no more. But he's going to a place. Well, he ain't got the word about no more hospitals, no more doctors, no more, no more pain, no more suffering. He go into a place where every day will be Sunday and Sabbath to have no end. He go into a place where Jesus declared that the weak, the wicked will cease from trouble and the weary will be at rest. So over there, where the place where he's traveling to, it won't be no thieves and robbers over there. Won't be no liars backbiters over there. Nothing but the righteous shall see God. From judging from the reflections, I can imagine Robert saying to his family, hold your hands up, because I'm all right now. If you want to see me again, you got to get all right. And you got to get all right with the maker. One day, one day, we too must do what Robert did. We too got to meet the man that Hung, bled, and died, because we too got to go this way, but we too got to be ready. And they ain't to say that I'm all right now. I, I hear, I hear Paul was telling this, son Timothy, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He goes to verse 7, and I like so much about it, he said, for I have fought a good fight. Yes. I have finished my course. Mm -hmm. I have kept the faith. And, and now So I'm all right now. I, 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 I know, I know he might have made some good money traveling up and down the road, but now the paycheck that he's about to get. He said, Pit for there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Yes. Uh, I, I, I know the money might have been good, but, but this check that he's about to receive. Can't no money buy it. Can't no car take the place. Can't no city take the place. Only God can do this. And so Robert is saying to his family, I'm, I'm all right now. <laughs> the reason why I'm all right now, because I'm going to my maker. <laughs> I'm going to the one that loved me beyond all my children. <laughs> beyond love me beyond all of my grandchildren. <laughs> beyond me, love me beyond my mother and father, my sister and brother. I'm going to see the man that they call Jesus. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can I talk about for a few minutes the man named Jesus that once lived on the earth? The one that walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem. The one that came down 42 generations just for a time as this. A man that loved me beyond all of my faults. A man that didn't look at me for what I was but looked at me for what he created me to be. A man that told me that prepare a place for you that, that where I go and yeah you may be also and, and I'm where the, and where the scriptures say that in my father's house I'm in the mansions and if it were not so I would have told you but I hear all of a sudden I'm going now to my mansion over there in my mansion I'm going to talk with the father when I get in my mansion I'm going to check with the son I'm going to tell him all I dare you to get your house in order, get your business fixed up, get your mind made up. And one day, one day, when your name gonna be called, you can look back and say, I'm all right now. I don't got my business fixed up with the Father. I don't got my mind made up. And I'm going to get my crown. I done ran my raise, and I'm going to finish my course. Now my crown. What a deal, Daisy. I don't know when and I don't know where, but you two got to do a wrong deed. You got to leave this old world. Bye bye. You got to say bye bye, mama, and bye bye, daddy. Bye bye, sister, and bye bye, brother. Bye bye, friends, and bye bye, bye bye, associates. I'm going to my father. I'm going somewhere beyond the clouds. I'm going over there where I ain't got to worry about going to the hospital. Where I ain't got to worry about sickness, attacking this old body. I'm going to a place where I'm going to have a good time with Jesus. Can I get a witness in here? I got to leave you now. One day, one day. This same Jesus had to do what Rob did. One Friday, y'all, they took this Jesus. They took my friend. They took my father. And they took your Savior. And they led him out of the eastern gate of the eastern side of Jerusalem. They took my Jesus and they marched him up 72 steps up the Hill. They took my Jesus when they got him to the cross on the top of the hill. They laid him on that old oak tree and they ribbed his hands and they ribbed his feet and they put a holy crown around his head. But now in the end of the story, they took my Jesus and they hung him high and they stretched him wide. They pierced my Jesus in his side. He hung right there from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Good God Almighty. And then he took his head in the lock of his shoulder and said, I'm all right now. It's finished now. I commend my spirit back to you, Father. And so they took my Jesus down off the cross and they laid him in a bar or two. He stayed right there. Three days and nights, but early Sunday morning, my Jesus got up, rebel in one day. I'm gonna get out the grave. Hey, me and Jesus, we gonna have a good time. Well, as I leave you, it's all right to cry. It's all right to shed tears. But I can hear Rock and mine. I can imagine what I was saying to y'all. Don't worry about me. For I'm all right now. And if you want to see me again, get your house in order. Amen. Get your business fixed up. And then one day, we'll have a great reunion. Amen. Amen. And the of our board staff as we get ready for our committal.
after we do the committal, you know, all of that and reception, where we open the cabinet for those that didn't see, get to see the body, didn't get to see it from the last time, amen. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God and His wise promise to take out this world unto Himself the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit His body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, said the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their work do follow them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, again, we come to say thank you. God, thank you right now for this family. God, we ask that you hold them in the palm of your hand. God, keep them, oh God, as they leave this place and not your presence. God, let them know that you're always there, that you, you'll never leave them, nor that you forsake them. Let them know, God, they can call you in the time of the night and you will answer, oh God. God, give them strength to endure this, oh God, and let them know that you're the only one that can fill the void. Fill the void right now, God. Comfort their hearts and their minds. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Benediction. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling. May the love of God rest through and abide his forth now and forevermore. All God's people say. Amen. 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 Who didn't view and would like to, you may come now. <laughs> 